it's your boy Ross back here again with another video. So, you guys have been hitting me up like crazy saying it's official. CM Punk is signed with AEW. It's official, bro. You got to talk about it. CM Punk is signed. It's You got to got to talk about this. And then this shows up in uh, in my sub box by WrestleMania himself, CM Punk, 100%. Set for return, John Cena's secret WWE return match, new WWE pay-per-view, and wrestling news. And I've been seeing, you know, articles and stuff, but I wasn't sure. But it seems like a lot of people are going on this story that this is a real thing. AEW has acquired CM Punk. We got to check this out, man. This is, this is crazy. The Daniel Bryan stuff was already next level type insanity as a acquisition for AEW but CM Punk that that really does change some things I'm not gonna lie to you it, it, it definitely will create even more buzz with AEW let's see what WrestleMania is talking about what is going on guys it is WrestleMania here back with another video now it's time for the first Smackdown of July and with money in the bank behind us, there should be some fireworks on today's edition of the Blue Brand. Join us now as we look at the 23rd July edition of Make Smackdown sure as well as the wildest wrestling news stories and rumors you need to know, including WWE announcing a new pay-per-view, CM Punk is 100% for Chicago, John Cena's secret wrestling match, does WWE want CM Punk back, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. As always, we won't recap the show, but just provide you with the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good as number one, John Cena on SmackDown. Mm -hmm. As Cena may have been busy in Hollywood, but his appearance on SmackDown served as a reminder he hasn't forgotten his wrestling roots, nor is he going to phone in his appearances during his limited run in the WWE. Cena's challenge to Universal Champion Roman Reigns was well done with the face that runs the place knowing which buttons to press to get a solid reaction from the fans. Cena did his best not to turn off Roman Reigns fans, admitting the fans could cheer and boo whomever they want. Cena could have taken the Goldberg route and made one or two appearances before wrestling at SummerSlam, but it appears he's taking advantage of his small window of opportunity to spend as much time with the WWE Which Universe as possible. Which is good. Number 2. Finn Balor Dominates now, until last week, Finn Balor hadn't been in a SmackDown ring in nearly two years. That's so crazy. perhaps that's why he was ready to remind the fans what they've been missing. I am very interested to see what happens with Finn Balor. I'm very interested to see how they book this. Like, I didn't expect it so soon. Finn Balor versus Roman Reigns, but I'm interested to see where it goes. Since the Prince headed to NXT, Balor's bout against Sami Zayn was the right way to show Balor still has it. Having Balor challenge Roman Reigns at the end of SmackDown was a fantastic surprise that should have had fans talking while they wait for the inevitable announcement of Cena vs Reigns at SummerSlam. We can't wait for Balor vs Reigns, a pay-per-view level match that will more likely be available on free television. Number 3. SmackDown is a star-studded show and watching last night's SmackDown, it was impossible not to notice the sheer amount of star power yeah, on the blue brand. Nice First, there are main eventers yeah. such as Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Edge, and John Cena. Mm -hmm. Second are the upper card stars such as Rey Mysterio, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Bianca Belair, Sasha Banks, Bayley, Baron Corbin, Finn Balor, and Big. I hope he talks about the Rolling Loud stuff. Please talk about the Rolling Loud stuff. The Blue Brand's mid-card roster is impressive as well, mm -hmm. but where things really shine is how the WWE uses all of its stars on SmackDown to create a consistently excellent show. Fox must be thrilled with the number of stars that WWE has put on its Friday night program. As for the USA Network, they're probably more concerned with the weak booking on what used to be the WWE's flagship show. Yep. Number 4. Tony's Terrific Debut <laughs> a kudos to the Shout out to everyone that was in the chat. The BBTs, man. Big Booty Tony, man. Shout out to y'all, man. Y'all was amazing in the chat. The WWE for the excellent job they've done with Tony Storm so far. Not only heralding her debut with hype videos, but giving her a chance to impress the fans in her debut match. The WWE Universe knows better than to take a wrestler's debut and give it much weight. Whether it's a win like Storm's match against Zelina Vega or Karrion Cross's surprise loss to Jeff Hardy on this week's Raw, but Storm is Rest off to a good start. Us. Number 4, a fiery feud. A Seth vs Edge is- Seth vs Edge. Not the main event feud, but damn near could be. I am looking forward to that. I, I'm. It's it's gonna be nice. Question is, I don't know who you have win. I I don't know, because if you have him beat Edge, 
you would think he would probably be next in line to go against Roman Reigns. So, I, I don't know. Comment down below. Let me know. Who would you have win? Seth Rollins or Edge at SummerSlam? Let me know. And let me know why. It's going to be fire. There's no getting around it. The WWE has been slowly simmering the heat between the two men and finally bringing it to a boil up money in the bank. Last night's showdown was another well-booked step in the program between the two, with Rollins even recalling the time it could have ended Edge's career back in 2014. This was the time that Seth threatened to snap Edge's neck unless John Cena agreed to let the authority come back. Mm -hmm. The WWE's mention of their past history was a clever way to add more heat to the feud and to show that Rollins has a long memory when it comes to slights. Mm -hmm. Edge added to the trip down memory lane, name-dropping some of his past affiliations, such as his time in the Ministry of Darkness, serving up a reminder to Rollins that he too is a man with a history of violence. Mm -hmm. This feud is going to be solid on the microphone and Facts. in the ring, and we hope it lasts longer than one match at SummerSlam. Yeah. And be kind to Corbin. Poor pathetic Baron Corbin. It's been a tough time for the former what, King of the Ring, and things somehow keep getting Corbin. worse. Once again, Corbin has shown he can take any storyline and make the most of it. In this case, a string of bad luck that has him suffer various financial failures, resulting in his car being repossessed. His Especially his hairline. Jesus Christ. Bro, his hairline is atrocious bro jeez god damn bro i'm so glad and blessed and thankful my hairline don't look like that bro jeez oh my gosh yo <laughs> rest in peace of man corbin's hairline it's just just go bald bro that just don't look oh man identity stolen and his attempt to get back on his feet via crowdsourcing site backfiring Corbin has been portrayed as an arrogant heel for so long, but somehow he's found a way to elicit sympathy, not only from fellow wrestlers like Kevin Owens, but from the fans. Baron Corbin has been nothing less than delightful, and while it remains to be seen if Corbin is headed for a run as a babyface, we can't wait for the inevitable rollout of Simpsons' means of Hans Milman getting hit in the groin. But that was good. What about the bad? Well, oh. to be honest, there's nothing bad other than the WWE airing yet another women's championship match with Carmella unsuccessfully challenging for the title. At this point, we hope the WWE is going to shake up its women's division with the new call-ups like Tony Storm and use other contenders such as Liv Morgan. So if there was nothing bad, then there's nothing ugly about last night's episode of the Blue Brand. In fact, SmackDown delivered a fantastic- I'm sorry, I'm going to disagree with you, WrestleMania. There was definitely some, some ugly. Those matches, even though they were good in front of the Rolling Loud crowd, should not have taken place at the Rolling Loud uh, Festival. It just, the piped in fake chants and fake crowd noises, not what's up. The matches were decent, but it just took you out of it because you knew the crowd chants were fake. The crowd looked dead. And then uh, also, the Big E segment where he's supposed to be getting his moment of shine, winning money in the bank, and then it gets interrupted by everyone else in the locker that's in the mid-card division. So I didn't really like that too much. I think uh, Big E should have had more time to really, like, enjoy his moment because that is his moment. So that would be my only critiques from the show. And outside of that, it was solid. So I definitely gave it a 7 out of 10 last night. Follow up to Money in the Bank, where there was a slow tease of Mr. Money in the Bank Biggie hinting at who he plans on challenging for the title, the ever entertaining work of Roman Reigns as the Blue Brand's top heel, or the WWE's effective use of wrestlers from mid carders to main eventers. The Blue Brand continues to be the place for the WWE fans, and there are a number of potentially hot programs for fans to keep their eyes on. What did you guys think of SmackDown this year? Let us know in the comments down below. Now, let's move on to the news. Getting to, to the news section of things. Our first story looks at WWE announcing a New Year's pay per view. The WWE is about to make history as it plans on airing its first pay per view on New Year's Day. Mm. WWE.com released the following WWE will kick off New Year at State Farm Arena in Atlanta wow. on Saturday, January 1st, 2022, marking the first time in history that a WWE pay per view event will be held on New Year's Day. Damn. The event will stream live on the night of New Year's Day at 8 pm ET exclusively on Peacock in the US and on WWE Network everywhere else. The WWE held its. Yes, this is definitely giving me New Year's Revolution vibes, man. Who remembers that, that pay per view uh, series, man? New Year's Revolution. It was actually not that bad. It actually had some pretty good storylines um, back in uh, back in the day, man. New Year's Revolution pay-per-view during the Ruthless Aggression era. Mm -hmm. This marks another pay-per-view that has been held on a Saturday rather than the traditional Sunday night mm -hmm. slot. Next up, Cena's secret match. A wrestling fans attending SmackDown got a huge bonus when John Cena teamed up with the Mysterious after the show went off the air to take on Roman Reigns and oh, the Usos. Wow. 
The match saw Cena and the Mysterious defeat the Tribal Chief and his allies, and no doubt a good way to entertain the fans and get Cena prepped for his SummerSlam match against Reigns. Well, Rumor has it that Cena and the Mysterious will also team up a few times this summer as the WWE holds its various Cena-centric events billed as the Summer of Cena. Next up, CM Punk is 100% gonna be in Chicago. Okay, now let's face it, we've had so many rumors regarding CM Punk on whether he signed or not, with many sources stating that there is interest in AEW, while others are saying that he has put pen to paper and has signed with the company. Yeah. And now to fuel even further rumors, Cassidy Haynes of Bodyslam.net is claiming that Punk is 100% gonna be there for AEW Chicago events that run in September. Speaking on the podcast, Haynes mentioned, I was told he was 100% for Chicago. They want CM Punk to be in Chicago. He's 100% wow. going to be there. And it's not a matter of if, it's when. Currently, AEW is running three events in Chicago. Dynamite on September 1st, Rampage on September 3rd, and the All Out pay-per-view on September 5th. To add even more fuel to the fire, guess who's following a living color? Yeah, the artist of CM Punk's theme wow. song in the WWE cult of personality. Hmm. All sounds a bit sus, doesn't it? Next up, can bro, if you hear that, sh sh dun 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 dun, if you bro, definitely, I may have to check it out. I may have to check it out, bro. I'm gonna be kind of lost on the wrestlers and stuff like that, but I know you guys will help me out. I may have to check this out because here's the thing about EW. I wish I could do reactions to it, but once again. I'm not trying to get a strike on my channel. I got a strike on my channel uh, a couple of years ago from New Japan Pro. So I keep all AEW stuff off the channel because they're very strict. So I probably will have to do a live stream. So I'm going to figure out these dates, figure out the times. I may have to do a live stream for you guys. Dead ass. May have to do a live stream. Check this out because I want to be able to literally just mark out hearing that song, hearing him come out. Hearing the holy shit chance, I think that's gonna be amazing. Kenny Omega talks Punk and Danielson in AEW. And while the wrestling world waits for confirmation of CM Punk, Root Insurance is a new type of car insurance that can give better drivers better rates. We gotta I see if, he's, if this is a real Punk thing, and man. Brian Danielson signing with AEW. Fans are speculating what could happen if the rumors are true. Fans certainly aren't the only people speculating, as seen when AEW and Impact World Champion Kenny Omega appeared on the Wrestling Observer Radio to discuss the situation. The cleaner commented, there are two very different athletes, two very different performers. Mm -hmm. I respect them both. Danielson, I still call him Brian Danielson. Daniel Bryan, I always knew that he was incredibly intelligent, ridiculously smart, especially related to professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. For him to create a movement, a legitimate movement with the Yes Movement, he created it. I'll make yeah, a bro, I don't think anyone can deny Daniel Bryan was one of the most over people since we had, since the Attitude Era. He legitimately created a organic movement that even people still today, if you heard SmackDown when Finn Balor was challenging Roman Reigns, they were doing the yes chance. That will forever be a thing, just like the what chance. No one's ever transcended wrestling like that outside of like Stone Cold, outside of like The Rock, the legends. He transcended wrestling. People were doing yes chance outside of wrestling. He created that. Simple as that, bro. Simple as that. So I would think WWE would have definitely did their best to make sure they could have kept him as much as possible because he, he it's Daniel fucking Bryan, bro. This one of the best wrestlers to ever wrestle. You know what I'm saying? So also praise CM Punk. CM Punk, a guy who probably has a different line of thinking than your current day performer and the average performer, and he has this incredible reputation. He has fans to this day who would follow him to the end of the earth. Mm -hmm. A very dedicated fan base, and that fan base believes he's the best in the world and will be the best until the end of time. Mm -hmm. If you're able to have people like that who follow your career so passionately, you probably have something very special about Max. you. Omega said he could not confirm either signing and noted AEW president Tony Khan has been tight-lipped about the entire... Nah. Like, that's why I said it's not been confirmed on both situations, but a lot of leaks are supposedly coming out and they're trying to keep this as quiet as possible. The situation. Honestly, at this point in time, he's the only one with an idea. He's been tight lipped and I prefer it that way. Mm -hmm. I don't want anything to slip that shouldn't be slipping either. All I can speak on are the possibilities. As we pointed out, it's not in AEW's interest to announce either rumored signing just yet. No. Nope. When it does happen, you can be rest assured AEW will feel it's being utilized to the maximum effect. And finally, does the WWE want CM Punk back? 
And while it looks like CM Punk has signed with All Elite Wrestling, and keep in mind it hasn't been officially confirmed, yeah. fans are curious whether the WWE showed any interest in bringing the straight edge superstar back to the company he walked down on in 2014. According to a report from Ringside News, the site asked around the possibility that Vince McMahon's company might have interest in bringing back CM Punk after so much attention was brought to him. But we were explicitly told that WWE has no interest in doing business with mm. Punk. Anyone familiar with CM Punk's history in the WWE knows that there are any number of reasons why people backstage and some wrestlers don't want Punk back. Likewise, Punk has plenty of reasons not to go back. Mm -hmm. And in the possibility they didn't want to get into a bidding war with AEW and Punk's uncertainty about the WWE would book him, it's kind of easy to imagine him signing with AEW. Yep. But there you have it guys, the good, the bad and the downright ugly from this week's match. And it makes sense. I, I've said it time and time again, CM Punk should never come back to WWE. Mm -mm. Let that be what it is. It's no point. It's too much bad blood there. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're not going to utilize him correctly. I can tell you this now. They're not. Unless he gets full creative control, they're not going to utilize him correctly. You feel me? I feel like in AEW, he's going to get booked correctly. I feel like he will have full creative control. He'll be able to, you know effectively do what he has to do to make the product better simple as that AEW's it, they're looking good the only thing that matters now is how they're gonna book AEW how are they going to maintain all these stars how are they gonna make these stars you know work with each other you know what I'm saying that's really gonna come down to great booking that's it, it it's really gonna come down to that because you have literally mega level stars in the company and up and coming stars in the company and at the end of the day wrestling is all about you know what I'm saying striking when not striking while the iron is hot imagine if they never you know went with stone cold when he was starting to get over they struck while the iron was hot and hopefully they continue to do that i don't want cm punk and daniel bryan to overshadow the younger talent because this is the moment where now they could potentially put over the younger talent to get them over to make them stars that's what it should always be about creating the new stars you know what I'm saying they're gonna have their moment they're gonna have their spotlight it's daniel bryan cm punk I just hope that they do the booking right where they create new stars out of them already being solidified. You know what I'm saying? So it was going to be interesting to see what happens. But hey, man, comment down below. Let me know. Are you guys even more excited with this potential acquisition of CM Punk and AEW? Or do you guys not too much care? Let me know. I want to get your thoughts and opinions on this. But I appreciate all the love and support. Bro, too. 50k we're almost there y'all appreciate y'all kicking it with me and i'll see y'all on the next one peace